folks. Thanks for joining me today. I was recently at a craft show and my vendor neighbor made a suggestion that I needed to do a frog. So, uh, Stephanie, if you're watching this, this one's for you. It's a frog. As always, I paint two rocks, one on camera and one off camera. And because there's so many different types of frogs out there, I did two different types. So the one that I filmed is an African tree frog. And I just loved it because of the amount of colors it has in it. It doesn't look like a normal frog you would think of in like the swamps or anything like that. And uh, just really, really cute. So that's the one that I did on camera. And then I did a different frog off camera. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end so you can see uh, the two different uh, types of frogs that I painted. I used Kelly Green for the background color and I painted it on and then I used a sponge to sponge out all of the brush strokes because I really wanted to have that satin kind of feel. And then I blended in a lighter green and some white and just blended it in very um, loosely. I didn't want it to be blended completely and I wanted to be able to still see the direction of the brush strokes that I put in. So I'll be using those later to define the leaves. But I wanted to sponge it because I wanted it to look blurred. So that's why I did it that way. All the colors that I used in this tutorial will be listed in the description below. But that's not to say that these are the colors that you have to use. These are just what I had available to me in my stash. And I suggest that you go through your stash and find out what you've got in there and just make this your own. This is just a tutorial to give you some inspiration and for you to be able to create something similar or use the different techniques in other types of painting. If you look closely, you'll be able to see some pencil marks that I've made. I did sketch out where I wanted the frog to be, but very lightly. So that pencil mark will be erased or covered over with paint. So I'm not too worried about it. I just wanted to make sure that I was center on the rock and I had the frog where I wanted it to be. This little tree frog is going to be creeping over a log. So that's what I'm doing right now is I painted um, a darker brown and then I added in different shades of light and dark and then blended it out with a sponge very quickly. I did this the same effect that I did for the um, leaves or grass that are behind the frog um, because I wanted it to be muted or like a satin finish just to give me a base color. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting in the details. So these are all of the little um, bark pieces of the of the log. So I'm just going in and being very carefree, putting the lines wherever my paintbrush wants to go, making sure that there's a little bit of shading in there. And then I go in with my blending brush and I just put in very, again, very loosely, uh, not paying attention to design. I just want the color in there um, and trying to keep within the darker lines that I've just painted on there. But I'm going in with a lighter color and then um, I put in an even lighter color just to give the reflection of light. Uh, and then I will be going in with an even lighter color of brown just to give that little extra. And I actually um, use my finger to uh, wipe it so that it has like a smear look. So I, I'm the first person to tell you that if you're painting and you don't have any paint on your hands, you're not getting into your work. So you'll notice in a lot of my tutorials that I have paint on my fingers or on my nails. Uh, that's not supposed to be there, but that's because I just, I get right into it. And it's very messy for me, but I love it. So that's why I do it. If you like this tutorial, please give me the thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel because I post every Friday. And if you don't want to miss it, hit that bell. You'll get notifications every time I post. The rock that I'm painting on is actually a casted rock that I made by using the molds from the Happy Dotting Company. And if you're interested in making your own stones, I've listed a link in the description below to her Etsy shop. Um, definitely go check her out. There's tons of stuff there that she has available. And if you're into more of the dotting side of the world, go check out the dotting center. I've definitely left a link down below for her shop as well. Make sure when you're there and you purchase something, use my discount code. 
So the log is almost finished. This is where I, like I said, I put on a little bit of a light color and I smear it with my finger. Unfortunately, because I've sped up the video for time, uh, it kind of looks like I'm really, you know, being crazy with it, but not really. Anyway, so um, now I'm working on the frog. So the frog has a white belly. So I'm just using my blending brush to uh, put on a really heavy coat of white. Um, and I just want to do this so that I get the outline. I'm not too concerned about being within the lines of my sketch or anything like that. I just want to get the shape. Um, then I go in with uh, a lime green or actually it's called a uh, light green. And I put that in just to get the shape of the head of the frog and I do his arms as well. I've never painted a frog before so this was a bit of a challenge for me um, to understand like the anatomy and how their legs work and position and all sorts of neat things that you don't really think of until you start painting one. So um, I did what I could, the, the best that I could. Um, I, I'm pretty proud of this. It's uh, my first frog and um, yeah, it's, it was quite the challenge. So thank you, Stephanie, for giving me this challenge to paint a frog. And I liked it so much, I did too. So like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, I have both of them uh, posted at the end of the video as uh, still photos. So definitely check them out. And leave me a comment below. Which one do you like better? Do you like this African tree frog that I'm painting here or the one that I painted off camera? Uh, so make sure you stay on till the end so you can see both of them. And leave me a comment below. Let me know which one is your favorite. I'm doing an outline now on the frog just so that I have a better idea as where things are. And because um, I, I will be putting in additional colors and things like that. So this gives me a really good idea as to where things belong. And I may go over top of the, but that's okay because it's just more of a guideline for me. And it cleans it up so that I don't have that fuzzy look because frogs aren't fuzzy. So um, they have these amazing big bright red eyes. So that's what drew me to this frog to want to paint it because of the colors in them. So I was very excited about uh, doing these eyes and, uh, and his feet. Wait till you get to his feet. They're just amazing. Or do you, their paws? No, they'd be feet. I don't know. Um, but anyways, so when I was doing the eyes, I tried two different types. And I thought I'd leave them in so that you could see the different uh, ways to do them. I decided to go the way that I, well, you can see now with the, just a little slit with a, a diamond shape to it. Um, it just seemed to look a little bit better and a little bit more of the African tree frog, uh, the references that I found on the internet. So now I'm doing his feet and they're like this really bright orange color. And then his toes almost look like they're suction cups. So um, he's got no claws or anything like that. Most frogs don't, I don't think. Um, sorry, I'm not a frog expert, but um, so it was really neat to, to paint this to give him that, uh, like the webs on his feet and the suction cup fingertips or whatever they're called. And I'm, I'm not very technical here, but it was really, really fun. It was a challenge and I loved it. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, so I, here I am, I'm just sort of cleaning up his toes and his paws or hands, feet, I don't know. So I'm just cleaning them up just to uh, give them that uh, unfuzzy look because I used the blending brush to put them on. So I continue just to outline uh, all of his toes and everything else, give them more shape, more definition. And then I do go in with a darker color, slightly darker. And all I did was I took some of the orange and I added just a tiny bit of the brown and mixed it together. And that gave me the darker shade of the orange. So I was able to use that to do any of the dark shading or defining of 
like I did uh, his webs in between his toes and uh, his knuckles and I guess like how his finger goes up into his hand. And then I do something very similar using a lighter color. So I used, again, the same orange, but I added a little bit of the white just to give it a little bit of a brighter color. And then I did highlights so that um, there looked like the same light that was coming to shine down onto the log that I did, that it's also coming down and shining on his feet. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I just do a little bit of touch up with the uh, green paint because he actually has some of it come down on, I'm going to call it his pinky finger because I really don't know, but <laughs> so it does, it comes down onto his pinky finger. And then this is really cool. He has a blue stripe that goes and separates the orange of his feet and the green of his arm. It's just so cool. So um, I used, I think it was bright blue that I used. Again, all of the, the colors and the brands that I use are listed below. Um, but wow, just amazing. I couldn't believe the colors of this frog. Uh, so now I'm just uh, defining his lips, uh, his top and his bottom lip here, and just adding in a little bit of shading just so that it uh, looks a little bit more realistic and that he's smiling. And gosh, this was just so fun to do got to add those little uh, light bloops into his eyes as well uh, because we've got that light that's coming in and shining up against or onto the log and uh, his hands or feet or whatever. So now the last step that I'm doing here is I'm just adding in some leaf shapes and I'm trying to follow the same shape that I had used when I blended the colors together and I just add these in uh, to give more of a definition. Some are a little bit, you know, curly. Some are straight up. Some you don't see the whole thing. Uh, and then I do go in with a little bit of a darker color because some of these dark lines are actually too thick. So I lighten it up by just doing what I'm doing right now. So when I said that I was going to use a darker color, what I really meant was that I was going to use a lighter color because that's what I'm doing now is I'm putting in a lighter color to go over top of the, the thicker lines just to make them thinner. And he's done. So remember folks, life is what you make it. So get creative. Mm -hmm.